everyone. Welcome back to a new episode of Mahogany and Friends. Today's episode is titled Coming of Age. We'll talk through all things color theory and how fashion has and continues to play a role in telling Black women's stories. So with that said, let's talk. Our next guest is a video artist, editor, and color grader based in Atlanta, Georgia. She's known for creating films that center young Black women for her 15K fan base on YouTube, and more recently, she created a short film titled Petals, in which she was later selected to be screened at the 2018 Kings Film Festival. So please give a warm welcome to Tara Olieye. Hi, Tara. Hey, Tatiana. <laughs> How are you? I know I asked you that question before we started recording, but just for the people out there, how are you feeling? I'm good. I'm taking it day by day, just like everyone else. Yeah. Um, it's been a time, but <laughs> you can only, you know, take it one step at a time. So, yes. Yeah, so um, I completely understand. And we just want to honor you again for, you know, being here today and, you know, giving us that energy that we're so grateful for. So I just want to preface that. Um, so Tara, can you share with us how do, a little bit about first introduce yourself and can you share with us a little bit about how you got your start into film? Sure. So I'm Tara Olieye. I am a filmmaker, video editor. Sorry, let me say that again. A filmmaker and video editor out here in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been on my filmmaking journey for about three and a half years now. Mm -hmm. um, or is it four? Maybe more four years than three and a half. Um, and yeah, I make narrative film projects that center around Black women. And I really enjoy being experimental and fun with my storytelling style. And just, you know, I like to keep things light, but still, um, you know, socially conscious as well. So yeah. Yeah, and I love that, you know, I don't think we often get to see young Black women in coming-of-age films. It's definitely mm -hmm. centered in a white gaze perspective, so right. I think it's refreshing also to have something that was created by us for us, kind of, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. You, you having the opportunity to be behind the scenes, but also, you know, shining a light on that in front of the camera as well. Mm -hmm. It's super powerful, um, and that brings me to ask you, like, what were your intentions when you first started posting short films on YouTube? Um, well, it's funny. Um, I actually had no real intention of making films mm -hmm. um, up until about four years ago when I took a narrative filmmaking class. My first semester of my senior year of college, I was kind of dragged into it by my friends, Layla and Zalea. Um, we took a documentary filmmaking class the semester before, and I was like, we had a lot of fun doing that, but then when it came to narrative, I was like, I have no idea how to write a script. I don't know like anything about this like whole world of like um, narrative filmmaking. So I was very intimidated, but as, sorry, my heart's racing so fast. No, take your time. Like, listen, Tara is like the sweetest person I've gotten to interview so far. And, you know, I, we really set out to have this conversation with you just because, mm -hmm. again, we don't see a lot of like Black women behind the scenes. And so I'm just truly in, in inspired and want to get an understanding of like, how do you, you know, find this passion, you know, for film and, yeah, and, and you know, YouTube is such a huge platform for people mm -hmm. to, you know, post their work. And so, so I, you know, we're just curious, like YouTube is the platform. How did you get your start there? And like, like you said, it was kind of all by accident, right? So yeah, it was kind of all by accident. Um, as I, you know, began practicing and learning about how to write scripts, I um, kind of realized that the reason I was so intimidated by making narrative filmmaking was because I had a very narrow viewpoint of what a narrative film is supposed to be and is supposed to look like and feel like right. and who the characters are supposed to be and what stories we're supposed to like have. Um, so as I realized like, oh, I can actually like really like insert myself into these stories. Right. That's what made it so much more comfortable for me. And as I began to like seek inspiration um, in experiences that I've already had, it just kind of made the creative process a lot easier and it made it kind of therapeutic in a way as well. So yeah, yeah it's just kind of been a 
growing and like learning process. And that's me. super refreshing to hear, right? Like you kind of had to find your own style and find what works yeah. for you. And, and, you know, I'm curious to know how it, how it, to, to people who don't know your work, how would you describe your style of your films? Um, I would describe my filmmaking style as kind of like childlike and youthful, colorful, expressive. I'm kind of like a big kid at heart. I love cartoons and movies that are meant for like eight-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> but so but that's over that's like really nice because you know it, it we I feel like we live in a time where the youth is ready to be heard right yeah and yeah I definitely think it's refreshing to see in your work that you always center the youth right so yeah it's, it's one of those things that I think it is still we still have lots of work to do in the film space definitely um, and so it's really striking because uh, one thing about your films is you use a lot of color and fashion. Yeah. How important do you think that role is in when you're creating your work and your process? Um, so I've loved fashion and clothes since I was so young. Um, so it's something I've always gravitated towards and it just kind of makes sense that those two things play a pretty vital role um, in the work that I'm doing today. Um, so yeah, when I make short films, the color story is always an important layer within my storytelling. Um, for example, the last film that I made my senior year of college is called Token and it's about this Nigerian American girl who goes to this predominantly white school mm -hmm. and it focuses on her struggles with microaggressions and exclusion, like implicit exclusion. Um, and yeah, the colors and the outfits and props were mainly red, white, and blue because I kind of wanted all of the characters to kind of um, wear these patriotic colors, um, kind of like poking fun and kind of showing the irony of American life you right. know, how, you know, America kind of stands on this, like, illusionary um, idea very, of, like, yeah. equality, yeah, yeah. and um, everyone having, like, a fair shot, but, yeah, through that story, you begin to, you know, realize that, like, it's all really illusionary, the whole idea of the American dream, so, yeah, those are kind of the ways that I like to use color um, in my projects to um, help create symbolism and help add like extra like layers and textures within my stories. Yeah, and that's super powerful because when we're thinking about from casting to how people are dressed to, you know, post-production, yeah. like all of those factors uh, play a huge part in the end, you know, the end result. And I think about identity politics, uh, the identity politics in the same yeah. way. Where that's such a, like, who is the protagonist, right? You know, mm -hmm. how are we centering those um, people? And, and, you know, again, it just reaffirms how important it is for us to be at the forefront of, you know, the work that we do. Um, so it's really nice to hear that you, you are actively and consciously doing that. Yeah. That brings me to ask you, um, yeah. you know, can you tell us a little bit more about the ideas behind your most recent film, So Natural? Um, sure. So, So Natural was very it was a very interesting experience um i was actually going to like throw the entire project away because i had an original idea for it the original concept was supposed to be about like black women and mental health and just overthinking and this this and that and i wanted it to be super complicated and i had really like ambitious ideas for it but as we decided to you know do the shooting and everything like that so many things kind of like fell through the cracks because we were also shooting on um 16 millimeter film and also super 8 film and if anyone that's listening has ever worked with film it's a whole different Included. experience <laughs> um to working digitally it's like night and day mm -hmm. so yeah before shooting this project, I'd only worked with film one extra time. And I guess I thought I was an expert <laughs> after working with it just once. Um, but yeah, a lot of things kind of went wrong and we just had to improvise. And when I got the film back, I realized that so many shots that I thought were going to look amazing just were either out of focus or like were crooked or just didn't look good. So what I ended up having to do was kind of use the shots that did work 
and mm -hmm. kind of piece it all together and kind of figure out a new storyline for it because mm -hmm. the in order for my original concept to work I would have needed shots that ended up not even like working out at all so yeah I basically just finessed that one and that was kind of the first time that I ever did something like that and so it kind of just naturally reincarnated into this like film about like the sun and melanin and mm -hmm. nature and black women kind of um returning back to nature right. and earth so yeah it it took a turn but it took a, it was a turn that like i'm actually very like happy and surprised that that's like what yeah. happened um so. and no pun intended you know it, the it's titled so natural right and yeah i think we as black women are never offered the space to make mistakes to you That's know so true. If, if we're talking literally or you know you know in the, in the sense that like our sometimes our mistakes are what make the end result right like you explain yeah. how much um you had to go through in doing this production and it just is that more important for us to emphasize like the process right like that our mm -hmm. lives are a process there is no end result at all and and I think you there's a common theme in your work when I hear you talk like it's all of these these you know narratives play a part and it's super valuable to me um to hear you say that and I hope that those out there listening definitely you know can take something from that my question to you is what, what advice would you give if you could do it again you know how would you do things differently? What advice mm -hmm. would you give out to people out there who are trying to enter the video production space? Yeah. Um, any tips that you wish you knew before you started when you worked on your projects? Yeah, I would definitely say that it's really important to be patient with yourself and just understand that like you're going to move at your own pace. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy right now to just compare and look at other people you know we have such like easy access to other people's work yeah. um you know because of the digital space um so it's real easy to look at your work and look at someone else's work and be like my work is trash this work here is amazing look at the cinematography and the lighting and this this and that and it's just important to remember that like you're on your own path and everyone is on their own journey everyone has their own lane and there's like space for everyone to thrive like yeah. you don't need to have what someone else has in order to make a successful and powerful project you may think that you need to like educate yourself like crazy and like learn up about all of these like techniques and all of this like terminology and yes all of that is <laughs> super helpful and it's great but at the end of the day, when it comes to creating what matters the most is heart and intention and just being excited to see what happens and be excited to see how you've grown throughout the process from the very beginning of you starting to the very end of the project. So yeah, it's yeah, a process. For sure. And, and you know, today's episode is about coming of age. If you yeah, had yeah. to look at your, your younger self, what would you say to her? um like young how young like kid like, young or like, well, well, young I, don't, adult. I don't want to talk numbers but like in your adolescent you know yeah. years we're, we're, that's the moment where we're we're feeling the most self-conscious where yeah we see about the people around us and what they think about us and we mm -hmm. all shape ourselves based on what people around us think and so and you know there's so many things that I wish I could tell myself before Definitely. that I you know if I felt empowered in that moment and that's why I think when we think about visual language and we see these visual narratives play out like we need to center ourselves so that we don't feel alone and that we can reaffirm that like we are enough for ourselves right and so yeah. I'm just curious to you know hear how you feel is there anything that you wish you could have done differently or or you would have told yourself yeah as a young um person? <laughs> however young you want to take it back <laughs> um yeah um when I think of my younger self I just like can't help but get a little emotional but um I would just tell her that like it's so important to just embrace what you have um and just honor like 
the body that you came in, you know what I mean? And celebrate it and understand that like, there's a reason why you exist Mm -hmm. within the body that you're existing in. And um, it's gonna be a tool that strengthens you and becomes a huge inspiration for your art. So there's no need to, you know, walk around with a cloak of shame um, just for existing. So yeah, that's That's what I would tell. For sure, oh, that was beautiful. Like that's what they remember, you existing is enough. And yeah, you know, that might be controversial for some, but I really stand by that. And Mm -hmm. um, it's powerful and we need to, you know, build community and and remember that and, and, and affirm that for ourselves first so that we can shine that on others. And empathy is huge. So True. Especially in these times, you know, we're all just Definitely. trying to get through. And that brings me to, to ask you, do you have any current work that you're working on? I do, and I'm so excited about it. Um, <laughs> you feel I, as little as much. <laughs> um, I won't share too much of what the story is about, but it is something that I've been working on this entire quarantine. It's been a process, just like everything else in life. And yeah. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. I, I'm i just like happy to create and it should be done in the next couple of weeks. We're, you know, reaching the final stages. So I'm like really excited to share it with, with people. Well, that brings me to, thank you, Tara, for sharing that. And, mm-hmm. you know, that brings me to ask, how can our community connect with you online? Um, so you can find me on YouTube. My username is Tara Ola, spelled T-A-R-A-O-L-A. You can also find me on Instagram. My name is Tara Ola with two A's at the end. And then you can also find me on Vimeo too. Um, my name on there is Tara Olayeye, spelled T-A-R-A-O-L-A-Y-E-Y-E. And then I also have a website called taraola.com. <laughs> And I'll be sure to link all of this down below, guys. So if you want to stay connected to Tara, I will have that information down below. But honestly, this was so fruitful. I have to, you know, mention that Tara and I recorded this for the second time. (laughs) And, you know, the devil is always at work, but we prosper. And I'm super grateful for, again, having you on. And we appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it so much. Thank you for joining me today and Tara for this conversation. Um, And I will see you guys in the next one. All right. Bye.